Hello, hello, back again. It's been a while since I've done one of these here video things. I've been busy. Anyway, I'm still busy, but uh, I thought I'd uh, become unbusy for half an hour to at least look at this. This new little excitement. Um, it's a synth uh, made by Vengeance, and it's called Avenger. Or is it called Avenger? Uh, when Manuel does his brilliant tutorial videos, he calls it Avenger. But I'm going to call it Avenger. Sorry, I just am. I can't not call it Avenger. That When I see that word, that's what I see. So in this video, we're going to look at three things. Uh, and there's hopefully a little clickable thing that you can just skip all the waffle for what you don't want to listen to. The, first of all, a very quick overview of what the synth is and does. Then I've made a little tiny, tiny expansion, a microbank here called 16, uh, which I will talk about. And it's free. And then, did I say it's free already? And then finally, I will just show you roughly how I made one of the patches in 16, or in fact not, but similar patch. I'm just going to do something new, just to show you how fun and fast it is to work with. So the overview then, uh, it's, it's called the Producer Suite because it does a lot. It's more than just a synth. And in general, I think you'll probably fairly quickly get the idea that this is very much centered on EDM. Uh, but uh, that's, yeah, with a big caveat, it doesn't have to, <laughs> basically. But if you start going through, you know, I'm just uh, just going to... Lovely, lovely. And you've got all your categories here. One thing I immediately like to is I do like a proper browser. A, this is quite clear. You've got nice, nice, clear categories. But... Much better than that, we have a tag browser. So here's where you really see the EDM thing. If, you, if you're if you into hip hop trap and you want a lead sound, um, there you go. Um, I say it's lead, it's not categorized as lead here, so it's immediately quite confusing. But let's click leads here because this is the overall categories and you want something that's snappy and short. Well, not really leads are, are they? And let's see what that comes up with. Oh, I'll see what they mean. Yeah. So for genre stuff, and I do have to do genre stuff. I'm work media composer, and you have to do stuff that is kind of current. This will get you around very quickly. Uh, whatever thing it is, let's do something completely different. Pop chart, um, piano. Uh, that's bright. Check out the effects on that. And so, yeah, what do you get? I mean, it's like 800 patches. It goes through all that stuff. What's perhaps new to a lot of people um, is this idea of sequences, which are great fun. Sequences here. It's, I suppose people compare this synth most to Nexus 2, made by Refux, however you pronounce that, which is very much a preset machine. But it has these sequences in it that are <laughs> just kind of, oh, I don't know. They're just bonkers if you've never met it before. Um, this is what happens when you press C. Right, and then... I mean... What can you say? <laughs> it's just ridiculous, isn't it? And there's loads of these uh, sequences that are in there. They're an enormous amount of fun. And it's all going on. If you look up here... This shows you what's going on in that in that one sequence. So you've got all these oscillators and, of course, drums, as you hear. If I do, that's one bass line there. You've got a second bass going on there. There's some triplet action here somewhere. Um, what does that say? Bender. Oh, yeah, okay, right, fine. And so it goes on. That there's you can layer up these incredibly complex sounds and patches, and there's the drums at the end. I'll I'll sort of come to the drums later. Uh, so all I'm doing here is giving you the broadest overview of the kind of scope of what it does, which is a hell of a lot. Um, it sounds very, you know, very contemporary, very modern. Does all that EDM stuff that I'm not really into, but I need to <laughs> I need to have some time, so I don't do it down. That might be your thing. Not so much my thing, but there you go. 
And there are thousands of videos, official videos, that will take you through all the features um, of, of how to start creating these beast patches. I'm now just going to whiz straight on and go, right, that's, that's all well and good, but I love analog. I'm, I'm an old boy. I love the analog stuff from the uh, from the seventies, the eighties, that that kind of thing, and I want I was curious to know how it was going to be at approaching it completely different, and I got a bit carried away, and I ended up particularly I love sixteenth art patches, the ones that just da -da 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 -da, really simple. It uses a bedrock for tracks. You're not playing chords and normally single note stuff, but I love that stuff that. Um, like early Simple Minds, I mean, you know, Empires and Dance, Sons of Fascination, those early albums, I just love them, and up to about New Gold Dream, then it goes off the boil. Um, that's, I thought, I, I just started getting obsessed with, sometimes I, in a track I just want a 16th arp, and it's not always easy to find them, and I started making them, and this is a bank of 16 16th arps. There you go. You see what I've done there? Brilliant branding, isn't it? So... <laughs> There's one, it's two bar sweep, um, and it does what it says on the tin, really. If you look at the every, all these patches, are just single note patches. And there's always stuff going on in the mod wheel. I clicked that set, there's the first one, uh, two bar sweep. And on the mod wheel. I am a sucker for this stuff. And a bite. I'm going to go through all 16 because it doesn't want to take very long. Arp work. Guess what the inspiration for that name is. I should say I'm not slavishly trying to recreate anything here. I'm not even really being very purist about the analog thing. It's just more of a kind of a general steer that I like that era. Uh, ball games. This is the stupidest one. Um, it's not like a... I just messes with your head a bit. But I just kind of like this because... That's pretty full on, isn't it? on the mod wheel um i don't know it's just kind of fun it's the only patch like that really it's the least analog sound i love this stuff that sounds nice and old to me big anna not that big Incidentally, in the ARPs, I'm normally just doing simple notes. Sometimes I do octaves, nothing more than that, simply because it becomes less usable when you start constraining it melodically. Um, but well, anyway, when you put the mod wheel down, that's when it gets big. Comb over. Okay, I had to do some Jean Michel Jarish type thing. Um, it's cleaner than his old stuff. I wasn't deliberately trying to completely ape it, but um, just again in terms of a, a sort of a feel. Very simple. All these incidentally have got tags uh, associated with them. Uh, there's no genre tag here that fitted. 
This is all really, apart from world folk, it's all about modern dance music. And this is, I'm all about old stuff. So I've just put the electronica in all the comments, which seemed closest. Um, and that's me. Right. Okay. Where was I? Sorry. Go motion. This is quite good. Isn't it? Kind of hypnotic that display in the middle, isn't it? Hallucinant. This is probably my favourite of the lot because it's kind of fun anyway. Uh, the the mod wheel's insane on this. I love it. <laughs> Your head nodding. I think subconsciously there's something about the Run Lola Run soundtrack of that. I love this. something similar to that in Run Lola Run. This is a very simple patch. Just thought I needed a simple bass. Pretty mono that one. Most of the rest are quite wide. You get the idea, but if you need a 16th harp, this is where to turn. Don't pretend to be anything else. There you go. So what I'm going to do now is just show you what fun it is to work with and why I've sort of gone for this over and above a thousand other synths that have been out. And I'll, and I'll show you why, I hope. So the first thing you do on the memory thing here, initialize, that will just clear everything. And you end up with uh, one oscillator section of one drums that by default don't have anything in it. So it's just an oscillator. Oh, it's EDM. Oh. Immediate sounds like EDM. Let's make it not sound like EDM. There. And you can reset an in initial patch, which I will probably do, but I just wanted to show you quickly just how how seductive these effects are in suggesting a style. That just sounds like a saw, right? Nothing, but you just put... That reverb, uh, Acoustic Arts reverb, is so... And a bit of the delay in there. So it's just EDM. So if you don't want to do EDM, first thing you do is turn them off. Okay, now for most of these patches, I found most fun is to be had with the wavetables. And there's a synthesis section here with original 303. There's all sorts of old synths. And what a wavetable, you probably know, in case you don't know, what a wavetable does is it's not just one waveform. It's, let's do this, morph. PWM sweep, PWM would be pulse width modulation. It doesn't just it's like sample the waveform. It samples it one or 2,000 times or something with changes. So what this will be, this will be, I don't know what synth it was, uh, where this came from, but it will be the pulse width modulation. And I'd say I'm an old, I grew up with a synth called the Powertrain Transcendent 2000. Look it up. It was a kit synth, and it's the one that my school had, and they just let me run right with it. Bless them. And uh, it's now hip, or it became hip when I realised it was Joy Division's first synth, and I thought, yeah, some cred, because it didn't feel cred at the time. <laughs> it felt like the cheapest, nastiest synth. Anyway, pulse width modulation is one thing I quickly learned to love. I was just trying another one. Okay, you get. I mean, there's thousands of these wave sources, so let's let's go with that. Fine. Um, now, being old school, what I will want to do is I will want to put an LFO on that so I can move it. So I'm good doing that with the knob as it goes through. You see at the bottom here, that's scanning through the wavetable. I want something to automate that. So this is the way I've been creating these patches. It's not the quickest and best way, uh, but this is what you can do. Here's an LFO. And then an LFO, drag onto here, and it will move that with that shape. There's nothing there at the moment because there's no 
amplitude. You see these little yellow triangles that appear? What you do to make it happen is you click that, and there it's happening. Not very nice at the moment, so I'll slow it down. It kind of goes either side of that. You can offset. Watch what happens as I use the offset with the display. Turn the right down a bit. That's more like my kind of thing. That's that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it, let's just get rid of this in the mod matrix. That's another way of setting it up is here, but you can just do it all from that one window. I'm just going to get rid of it in a moment to show you how you're meant to do it, which is enable this. And you can have it go... Uh, no, not there. Here. Ping pong. So that's another way. I'm going to keep it the LFO for now just because I'm an old school boy. Okay, we start with that. Let's make an ARP out of it. So we go to the ARP. It's on. Why is nothing happening? Ah, that's what I did because I'm an idiot. Everything in Avenger goes has to be rooted. You've got it rooted here, but it's not switched on here. Doesn't sound very good yet, does it? And it's, uh, this is really basic, obvious stuff. Most of you will be so ahead of me, but you're just playing a sustain note again and again and again. You need to turn the sustain right off. And now there's nothing going on on your ADSR end hole. So we've turned the delay up. That's starting to sound a bit better. But what's happened here is that we've kind of lost that nice sweep effect. And the reason why is that that LFO is triggering every single time. Just doing that. And so what you need to do is you go to first MIDI note, and then it will keep going. Hear that? I'm going to sort of change that range a bit, you know. Just to this. That's starting to sound a bit better now. Um, and then there's various things you can do to make it big. Now, this mix control is great. That will add in a million oscillators. Seven. All right, seven. In stereo. But again... I just find that that might get you down that EDM route that you might not want to go down. Not so much there, but with leads and stuff, it starts to sound that distinctive super saw kind of thing. And so what you can do is go into the voicing tab here. Rather than start creating extra oscillators, let's just create these two here that will add to. So I'll do this one at a time so you can hear. That's all kind of phasey top of each other that's basically two more versions of the same thing now if i just move the tuning slightly that's starting to sound nicer you can pan it make it sound nice and white already it's the kind of sound that i like this is the kind of thing that i go for the next obvious thing you might look at is the filter now there's lots of different types of filters low pass high pass band pass band stop Van Stop I found quite fun. But for analog stuff, you've got these analog LP12. This is the rate, the severity of the filter. 8, 12, 18, 24 dBs per octave, I think that stands for. Um, that or the Nexus ones, they're quite analog as well. So let's go for Nexus 24. Not much change at the moment because it's fully open. Um, and if you want to add this like this adjusts the, the the amplitude of each note this one adjusts the filter at the moment it's not doing anything so if we turn the envelope up you see what's happening there it's this decay here so move that as a little click sound to it Sorry, I'm, most of you are rolling your eyes. You all know this stuff. But this is just for people who aren't really used to creating patches and just the basics of creating an analog sounding art. The resonance, that sort of chirpy sound. Anyway, you get the idea. Other good stuff to, to, to muck around with just to start varying the tone. 
again, you can modulate that. That might be quite fun. Let's create a new LFO. All you do, drag, drop. There, done. And horrible because it's too fast. And again, it's re-triggering every time. It's the old analog goodness that I love. Check that offset again. You can see what it's doing to the waveform there. Change the amount just by pressing that. This sync is fun. FM is good fun. FM tends to work well in multiples. Um, they're at quarter, they're at half, three quarters. And you can change the tone of that by, well, not that perhaps, all right. All these things to vary the basic tone of the sound. Not sure about that. The performance is going a bit mad, isn't it? I like that. And then if you want to start doing stuff with the mod wheel, okay, at the moment it's defaulting. This is its patch default. Is it just closes now? Which I think is pretty boring. Um, so I get that. I like more action to happen when you move a mod wheel, not to close something down. So what should we do with it? Turn the resonance up. That's a fairly basic kind of thing. Again, let's just move it. Um, and let's drag and actually turn this down slightly as it goes. Uh, I'll do it more, so down. Because what happens is that with that resonance thing, um, if you're at the top end of the cutoff, you don't hear so much of it. That You get more of the effect as you move it down. And let's make the patch of each note a little bit longer as we do it. That's quite an effective thing. So I've got the mob wheel up now. That's not effective at all. Rubbish. Rubbish idea. Sometimes it works better than others. <laughs> That's having more of an effect on the filter in this particular patch. So what I'll do, okay, fine. Drag it there. This thing. Drive can be fun. Yeah. And you can do fun stuff. You can add other oscillators. Um, put that in the ARP as well. Let's just solo it, a new one. And let's create a new filter for that. And now route it to filter two. And I can make this one really nuts. Spike, I'm not so keen on. Nothing terribly exciting. And then for the mod wheel, uh, oh, oh, I need to create a second amp and route it to the second amp, or else I'm going to muck it up. Right, so it's going through its own thing now. And with the mod wheel, here we go. And now we'll have it not on when the mod wheel is not going. Turn this up so that when the mod wheel comes up, it gets louder and louder. So if I combine the two, don't, know, don't love that. But anyways, just to show you how it works, isn't it? Um, hours of fun. And... 
to me, this works really well because you've got everything in front of you. Um, drag, drag. I love drag and drop. I love that you can just move things around. Old emulations. I know some people love the old, you know, Monarch and these kind of, uh, or Diva or these synths that are very faithful recreations and they go to the nth degree to make the sound exactly the same. And that's great. It sounds terrific. But I just don't find them satisfying to work with in a computer environment as opposed to hardware. It's hardware. It's totally different. I think... A synth has to work differently if it's going to work as a computer synth. And that's what I think this does very well. It's interface, it's drag and drop, how fast it is to move things around. You can then, let's just get rid of this. Um, of course, having done that, you can then just go back to the one. Move around all these waveforms. We're all sound totally different. It's it's just a, f a, a very fast fun palace, basically. Um I love the browser that you could be able to expansions will be all over the place in no time uh, with this because it's they're so easy to create. You think if I can do it for crying out loud. Okay, it's only 16 patches, but people who know what they're doing uh, will create really great expansions in no time. They do some official ones. They're not that cheap, uh, but they're very good, I'm sure. Um, the drums, I didn't, I sort of a bit all over the place. I've kind of neglected the drums here. Let's just um, initialize. Let's just very quickly show you the drums what promise they have as opposed to um where they are now here's the factory drums analog one let's not do analog now best not I'll turn off this great okay so you've got loads of drum kits that again it sounds very modern um, And you've got a drum sequencer that can be enabled or not. If you don't enable it, you just play it. You know, you just play it like anything uh, on the sort of standard GM mapping. If you route it to the drum sequencer, you've got all this going on. You know, uh, and it can do really, really clever things. At the moment, it's frustrating because you can only create one loop on any one patch. So there's not a whole lot you can do with that. And when you're in this loop mode, it just plays the same everywhere. You can't even drop it out and then just play a, a clap. You have to then, you know, put it in this different mode. And it's like, that's not very good. So to be honest, at the moment, it's a little bit of a toy, I think. So for these sequencer patches, which are a hoot, they're great. Um, it's not it's not fair, it's more than a toy, because if you use it in this standalone, you've got a terrific um, library of drum sounds that you can't easily interchange, but they are very good sounds, so you might use them for that purpose. But I want to see this develop with uh, Avenger as time goes on, and I want this to, so that you can use different patterns, you can play notes um, alongside it. So this whole drums thing, I think, is more about its potential at the moment than where it currently is. And it's and which is crazy because they've done so many clever things. If you watch the drum video, you can do so much clever modulation stuff with these loops. It's got all the potential in the world. I'm excited about the potential, but they just haven't sorted out some of the basics. And at the moment, really, it, synth is where it shines. So there you go. That's enough waffle on this. I hope it's given you a rough flavour. Um, terrific for media composers because you've got these all this content here that. Um, that gives you a such a broad that's quite nice and analog in it a tag browser that you can just look for stuff very quickly if you want a hard sounding or an aggressive sounding bass that's fat well that answers that doesn't it um very very quick to work with but if you want to start from scratch it's a, i think it's a sort of programmer's paradise really and it it draws you in for those like me who kind of go, ugh. do you know, it's it's a really fun thing to play with. Once you've got your head around the architecture, that all this routing, how that works, once you've fallen into the odd bear trap a few times, you know, persevere with it for, for a day or so, and then you'll have the basics. This drag and dropping is just an absolute riot. So uh, very much recommended. And the developer, um, they, they really seem very good at getting updates for this thing when it was released there was a whole lot of cpu problems and that uh, i found a cpu fine and those patches that i've done 
a, a, a pretty modest. They hover around seven, eight percent or something. Um, and I think I've got sort of good vibes about how they're going to go forward. They're good at taking suggestions. I mean, we all suggest different things, and they can't do, they can't please everybody. But, but yeah, I, I'm very positive. Omnisphere is my synth of choice uh, that I've always turned to. Its weaker spot has traditionally been the EDM stuff, so this is where this might fit in. And I like it for programming, but I think for programming, Avenger is winning it for me because when it when you're when you're doing this kind of stuff, electronic stuff, of course, Omnisphere has this massive library and these amazing pads and and, and these incredible esoteric things. Uh, but if you're more into just the, the straightforward synthesis, uh, I. I Avenger is where I'm going to turn to if I want to just program something like that now more than Omni. Um, there you go. Right, that's quite enough of that. I hope it's been useful. I hope it's given you a rough idea. If you want this 16 patch, there's at the bottom in the information, I'll put a link to it there, I think. Um, I tend to hang around some of the forums. The one I hang around the most is, and uh, I'm a moderator there, is a forum called The Soundboard. If you want a forum where people don't shout and people are nice to each other and you can just share tips and news and stuff, that's why we created The Soundboard. It's not a screaming, hysterical place. It's a place for if you're a, if you, <laughs> if you want to, you know, if that's what you're about, if you're a huge music fan, if you love making music, but you don't like all the noise that goes with it, then try that. And and that address is hopefully on the screen if I've mastered the technology, uh, the soundboard.net. And uh, it's a it's a private forum, but it's free for anyone to join. Uh, it's only private just so that we can keep the noise down, really, so that everyone just doesn't trample over it. And there's a little you can just speak a little more freely, perhaps. Uh, there's no advertising. There's no developer sponsorship, anything like that. It's completely independent. Um, so just a bit of a shout out for that, if that's what um, you like. And I'll be, I'll put the patches up there and, uh, you know, talk to anyone about them uh, at, at, at the soundboard. All right. Thanks, everyone. See you on the next one, hopefully quite soon. Bye. <laughs>